the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench. My name is John Brunswick and today we're going to be taking a look at Web Center. We're going to be surfacing information from Twitter inside of Web Center using ADF. We're going to get this done in under 10 minutes. We're not going to write a single line of code. Let's dive in. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is head over to Twitter and pull up the Twitter page that we want to pull data from. In this case, we're going to be using oracles. We're going to take a look at the RSS feed and actually view the source and save that down to a place that's easy to remember. The reason this is important later, we're going to use JDeveloper to create an XSD file that will let JDeveloper know what's inside of the Twitter feed. Let's go ahead and create a new application in JDeveloper and we're going to call it Twitter Fusion. We're going to create a Fusion web application. We're going to accept all the defaults except in our view controller. Here we're going to select the Web Center Portlet Creation Service. The reason that's so important, it's actually going to allow us to add in our application to Web Center as a WSRP portlet at the end of this demonstration. Once our application is loaded up, we're actually going to change some project properties. And we're going to go ahead and change the base path of our application to just Twitter. It's going to make it a little bit easier to understand the URLs that we're working with. Inside the web content area, we're going to go ahead and create a folder. And this is actually where we're going to end up generating our XSD document. So let's go ahead and name the folder XSD. And we're going to go ahead and create a new file that's an XML schema from an XML document. We're going to call this Twitter. And you'll notice the XSD extension at the end of this file. We're actually going to browse to the file system where we went ahead and saved our RSS feed. And this is going to allow JDeveloper to go ahead and introspect that file and see what attributes and objects we can actually work with when we're going to go ahead and put this onto our page later. So now that we have our XSD file, we're going to go ahead and create a JSF page in the web content area. And we're going to call this JSF page just twitter.jspx. And after the file is created, we're going to go ahead, save our application, and we're going to run the file, which is actually going to use the embedded web logic server in JDeveloper. And it's actually going to provide us access to the XSD file that we just created. The reason this is important, once the application server starts up, we're going to create a data control based on Twitter's RSS feed. So now that our application server is started up, you can see that it takes us to the blank page that we created. And what's nice here is we can just, we can remove the faces extension because that's actually being used just for any uh, JSF pages. And we should be able to access the XSD file that we added into the web content directory. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this address for the XSD file. Let's go back into JDeveloper and in the model project, we're going to create a data control based on the URL. And this URL, let's call it DC URL, is actually going to be using the Twitter RSS feed. So if we go back to Twitter, take a look at the RSS feed coming from it, we're going to be able to paste that as our endpoint for the data control we're creating. And you'll notice here the data format, this is why the XSD file is so important. Here it's asking for how does it know what type of data is coming back from the system. We can go ahead and grab the file that we put together um, based on the RSS feed. Let's go ahead and hit finish. Now you'll notice in a moment a couple things happened. Number one, a lot of things got built out inside of the model project. The other thing, we now have a uh, data control object inside of the data controls pane. So what's great, we can actually expand this object and drill into the channel within the RSS feed and grab an item. 
And with the item, we can drag and drop that directly onto our Twitter page and create a table. So for the purpose of this, let's create an ADF read-only table. And let's go ahead and say, let's let uh, people select rows, use sorting. We're going to remove a couple lines. We're going to remove description, good, and source. And then we're going to hit OK. Now, once the page builds out, we're going to do two more things. And then we'll be able to run it, take a look at it, and end up creating this as a portlet. So the first thing we want to do, let's actually take the title and we're going to drag that over to the far right. The title area actually contains the, uh, the majority of the information from the Twitter post. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the structure pane in the lower left to set the um, for this column, which is the title column, to auto extend, uh, auto extend itself. So what we're going to do, we're going to let it know that um, to push the last column all the way out to the edge of the page. So let's save this and let's actually run this page again. And what we should notice is everything builds out and it's using the live Twitter data coming from the Oracle Twitter feed. Now that the page is loading up, you can see it goes out, grabs the information, and in a moment it's going to paint it onto the screen. So we have the ability to do the row selection, which is something that uh, ADF is natively letting us do, as well as the filtering. So a couple nice things that we didn't have to write any code at all for, that it's building out automatically. Let's actually go back into JDeveloper, and now we're going to build a portlet entry based on the Twitter page that we've created. The really nice part, because we added into the project the ability to use the Web Center portlets, there's a button here that says Create Portlet Entry. We're just going to call this portlet Twitter Fusion. And as a description, let's just say Oracle's Twitter feed. Now, we're doing something really simple here, but we could ultimately end up using, um, we could end up using a preference to store the feed address or do something more complex. This is very basic. Let's go ahead and let's run our project again. And what we're going to do this time, we're actually going to grab the WSDL information for the WSRP2 based endpoint. And we're going to register it with Web Center to pull the Twitter data into Web Center. So it's pretty quick, as you can see. And we haven't written any lines of code at all. So the page will come up, and it'll come up just like it did before. The only difference, instead of using the spaces area, we're going to use uh, info as the end of the URL, and we're going to go ahead and grab the WSRP2 based WSDL. So one thing, we're actually going to use um, an IP address that our Web Center machine can recognize. Let's go ahead and put that in, and that's actually the network address for this machine. And let's head into the Enterprise Manager that is associated with our Web Center instance. We're going to use the tree in the upper left hand corner of the screen to navigate into our Web Center node. So let's go ahead and expand Web Center, expand spaces, and select Web Center Admin Server. And in the upper left, we can go ahead and register the producer. We're going to call this Twitter Fusion. We're going to add the WSRP endpoint. We're going to hit OK. And in a moment, this is actually going to go ahead and register the portlet with our Web Center instance. So what you saw in just the basic page, we're going to be able to pull directly into Web Center. So let's head into Web Center. We notice we come to a pretty basic landing page here. Let's open up Composer. And inside of Composer, let's add it above the Messages area. So you're going to go into Portlets. And we'll notice there's a Twitter Fusion folder. Let's go ahead, and this is the portlet that we just created. Let's go ahead and add it to the page. Close it out. Let's save our page. Close it. And there we go. We now have a Twitter feed integrated directly into Web Center. And it took us all of probably about three minutes to build out. We get all of the sorting capability that we had before. And it's all happening over WSRP2. So that's it.
and we can do this for any data it's not just Twitter data but any sort of XML data that you're working with it's going to follow the exact same paradigm bringing it into Web Center.